Right. Joining me tonight to discuss the latest on the government shutdown is Independent Senator Angus King of Maine. He serves on the Senate Budget Committee. And it wouldn't be shutdown showdown, of course, no, without Chief Political be. Analyst Gloria Borger and Chief Congressional Correspondent uh, Dan Abash. Uh, Senator King, uh, I want to ask you about this news that we have that President Obama has told Democrats uh, that his mind, he would be open to a short-term extension of the debt limit uh, and that I heard from a House Republican just before the show uh, that that's what House Republicans are going to be pushing when they meet with President Obama tomorrow. They are not going to be talking about reopening the government, but just extending the debt ceiling a few weeks uh, to, I guess, get us off our crisis footing. Is that something you could support? Well, I, I don't understand it, frankly. I mean, it gets us off our crisis footing this week, but we're going to be back on a crisis footing at Thanksgiving or, or sometime. I mean, I, I don't think the debt ceiling ought to be the the subject. I mean, I think it's perfectly appropriate to negotiate budget issues in connection with the budget and the continuing resolution and the funding. But the debt ceiling, we ought to just do and, and, and move on, in, in my view. So if, uh, if the president's willing to do it then I, and the Republicans agree, then I guess that that's probably going to happen. But, uh, you know, that's, that's more of what we seem to do best around here, which is put things off. <laughs> I want to uh, introduce you a little bit to our viewers uh, who outside of New England may not necessarily know that much about you, but you were a two-term two -term governor two -term of, of Maine. Right. You ran against a Democrat and a Republican. Uh, there had been a shutdown in Maine two years before, and you ran against the partisan system. Coming here uh, to Washington, is it as bad as you thought? Is it worse than you thought? You caucus with the Democrats, yeah. although you've said your mind is open if the Republicans ever take control, you could caucus with them. It, are things worse than you thought it might be? It, it, certainly they are in this, this two weeks. I don't, I don't think I could characterize my first nine months as being worse because we were able to do some bipartisan things. I got all in, very deeply involved last uh, summer in the student loan negotiations where that was a truly bipartisan deal where we snatched something that was about to die. Uh, immigration was done on a bipartisan basis. But you know, the problem is you get into this budget stuff and the, and the Affordable Care Act and you're getting to the core values of the two parties and that's the hardest thing of all but to make a deal. You, here you are an independent and do you feel like you're whipsawed? Uh, you know, this is the most partisan Congress we've seen in a while, a very partisan issue. You were spotted right. on the floor the other day of the Senate talking to none other than Ted Cruz, right? right. And your Democrats made fun of you a little <laughs> well, bit? Well, uh, you know, I went over and, and, and sat down with Ted because I wanted to know, can we move beyond this Obamacare thing? Because my view is... What was his answer? His answer was no. That's so oh. shocking. <laughs> it is. Uh, but, but, you know, because it's interesting. For example, today there was an op-ed in the, in the Wall Street Journal by Paul Ryan did not mention the Affordable Care Act Yeah, we noticed once. that. Yeah. You know, I mean, I yeah. thought that was... Ted Cruz noticed that. Pretty yeah, interesting. Right. <laughs> yes. but, but so I thought, okay, if we can move beyond that, then we can start talking about budget issues, which I think is appropriate. I don't think it's appropriate to relitigate a major piece of legislation in the context of a hostage But he said no to you. He, he said, we said, can't move beyond said, it. And your said, Democrats said, get, he, he get said, back over to this. No, no, they didn't say that. When, <laughs> when I walked back across the aisle, they, you know. They, they said, why are you eating at his said, lunch table? They said, what are, you, yeah, what are you doing over there? Yeah, there is, it does have a seventh grade quality. It definitely it, does. does. So, so I bumped into Senator King last night, I have to say. I thought you were a tourist. I, I saw him, and he was, no, seriously. He was Did I look his, lost? No, because you were with your iPhone, and you were taking pictures in the rotunda. And I thought, is that Senator, that is Senator King. And we started talking. But t the reason why I mention it is because it's a reminder that you are looking at Washington with fresh eyes, which yeah. is nice, well, which is that's, refreshing. That's, and and uh, so given that, and given your experience, give us the scoop on what conversations you might be having to get everybody out of this mess with people on both sides of the aisle well, since you're an independent. A reporter asked me today, what, what, are you, you know, what are you doing with all your spare time? Uh, because you know, there, there, there the are a lot of things not happening. Well, let the record show that it was like 9 o'clock last night. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but I can tell you, there are meetings going on all the time. Uh, I've probably met with 15 senators, long conversations with a Democrats Republican in the House. About, no, both. Republicans, Democrats. And everybody's trying to figure this out. And everybody's trying to figure out how do we get ourselves out of this fix. The focus, a lot of the conversation is, how do we help John Boehner get himself out of the fix that, that he's and so in? So what's the leading um, idea? Well, I think the leading idea is if we can get them away from trying to relitigate the Affordable Care Act, 
then there are lots of but things to can't. talk about. I mean, you, you, Ted Cruz said no. Well, no, but, but I, on the other hand, as you pointed out, you have Paul Ryan. Ryan. Yeah. yeah, you look at Paul. I mean, I, I'd call that a kind of, uh, he wasn't a you know, part of wilted I, olive branch. I mean, that. A was, wilted well, olive branch. <laughs> but it was an olive branch. It was a, he was saying, was here are point. things we can do that maybe will get us out of this. He didn't mention the Affordable Care Act. And uh, one of the problems, and one of the reasons, you know, I can share a little bit of perspective from both sides. One of the reasons the Democrats are in the Senate are so adamant about this is they felt like they've already given it the mm -hmm. office. Harry Reid made a deal with John Boehner in early September. Right. We're going to take the lower number on the sequester number on the continuing resolution. We hate it. We don't like it. But okay, to get it done. And then the Speaker couldn't get the vote. And the Democrats said to me so, that the Speaker can't deliver a pizza. Well, they're, they're, I, very, they're very annoyed I, with that. I, I, well, but, but you know, he's, he's doing his best. I'm yeah. sure he didn't go into his caucus saying, don't let me do this. And Senator, no, let right. me ask you a question, because this has become, I asked Senator Durbin about this today, the Democrat from Illinois, which is, House Republicans obviously are the ones who started this shutdown, because they said, defund Obamacare, or, we'll fund the, or we won't fund the government, right. and that was just a non-starter for the Senate, a non-starter for the President. But now, as everybody knew from the beginning, right? As John Boehner said in March, which is why in March he said he wasn't going to pursue that strategy. So, and John McCain said they never should have promised their constituents they could do it. So, right. but here we are, here we are, and John Boehner needs something, as you say. There, there, he needs something to be able to take back to his caucus to get something through the House of Representatives. Is that something that Democrats are thinking about? Uh, look, even if he and his Tea Party caucus is the reason we're here, we still, uh, this, we're all in this together. This is. Yeah, we got to play the hand as Deltas. I understand that. On the other hand, and you know, you ought to have him on and get his views. I don't I'd love wanna, to. I don't want to put thoughts in, into his head, but you, I don't think you're ever going to satisfy 40 to 80 members of his caucus. I, I don't think anything we could do short of repealing Obamacare would do it. I think he's got to have his hand strengthened with the rest of his caucus saying, look, I can deliver some deficit reduction. I can deliver some entitlement reform. And if, if I can do that, I think that will solidify the caucus enough to give him the vote.